Hello, welcome back to Retro Break. So recently I got this thing here which is called the SD Launcher for the GameCube and this lets you run homebrew games on the GameCube system and there's something that I've been wanting to try for a long time now it's called Game Boy Interface and it's basically a much better way of playing Game Boy Advance games on the GameCube itself and I was going to do that to use the EverDrive here to tell you guys all about some amazing homebrew games for the Game Boy Advance. But while I was looking through the list of homebrew games that were available, there was something even more interesting that caught my eye. So in this video, I'm going to tell you all about Game Boy Advance demakes. Now, of course, there were some official demakes that came out for the GBA. I've got a few here, like Jet Set Radio, Super Monkey Ball Jr., which was an amazing demake of the GameCube classic, Need for Speed, the entire series of PS2 Need for Speed games came out on the GBA, and of course, the SSX games as well. So if you don't know what a demake is, it's basically taking a console or a bigger version of a game and downscaling it onto a smaller system. And these were some of the official releases for the Game Boy Advance, but that didn't stop homebrew developers, just fans of the system, making some of their own. As well as a few that I found that were actually made by companies that were trying to get publishers to actually release these demakes on the Game Boy Advance, but for whatever reason they didn't actually get a release in the end. So I think this is a really interesting topic. There's six great games that I'm going to show you in this episode, so let's get started. So the first one we're looking at here is Turok. Of course, an absolute classic for the N64. This developer did a very admirable job of trying to squeeze it all down onto the Game Boy Advance. So let's take a look. So Turok here is actually one of the games that I mentioned where a developer was actually trying to get a publisher to make this an official release. It looks like it was going to be a port of the N64 classic. This version on the GBA was created by a small company called Similis and in 2009 the website Hidden Palace managed to get its hands on a ROM and they're now freely available to download online. Even though this is clearly a very early demo, it's still pretty impressive to see it running on the system. And of course eventually this was completely cancelled in favour of the 2D Turok game that we got instead, but I'm sure you'll agree that it would have been much more interesting to get a fully 3D experience for the Game Boy Advance. In terms of what gameplay is here, it's extremely basic. All you can really do is move around the map, there's no collision detection so you can walk straight through walls and the enemies only appear if you hold down the B button and then they just sort of dance in place and wait for you to shoot them so in terms of a demo there's not really much to go on but it is a very interesting glimpse into what could have been and there's actually three different versions of the ROM that are available online there's one that includes the Acclaim logo as well as the logo of the developers which was a bit of an earlier build and then there's also two other ROMs available there's the one that you're seeing now and there's also a brighter version which I presume was to show off on the actual Game Boy Advance system due to the fact that the original GBA didn't have a backlight. So I'm sure you'll agree that while there isn't actually much game there, what is there is very impressive. Now this next one is even more impressive than that. This is a GBA demake of the Sega Classic Virtua Fighter. So straight away you can see just how closely this resembles the arcade game that it's based on. I always love seeing fully rendered 3D models on the Game Boy Advance. It's just witchcraft to me. So this homebrew game was actually developed by the famous Jim Bagley who made a lot of classic Spectrum games and he's still going in the industry today making stuff for iPhone and of course the ZX Spectrum next. He's a very talented developer and the talent really shows here. And actually while I was taking a look at his page on gbadev.org it turns out that he's also made five other GBA homebrew games. One of them actually being another demake for a fantastic Dreamcast game called Cosmic Smash. Unfortunately though I couldn't get that one to run, but if this Virtua Fighter game's anything to go by then I'm sure that one's just as impressive. It's a very basic tech demo, it only actually features one other opponent, but there are a few neat little extras that you put into this, including the ability to be able to control the camera, as well as do a few little tweaks like turning the timer on and off, and also disabling and enabling the opponent's AI. In terms of gameplay, the controls are really responsive, and I could actually see this becoming a full game if the time and effort was put into it. And I'm sure if you went through with it, Sega would have lapped this game up, because as you saw in the introduction, Sega actually released demakes of a lot of their console games on the Game Boy Advance. They even released a version of Sega Rally for the GBA, which I think is a really impressive game for the system. 
Now this is one that completely blew my mind. I had no idea that such a thing even existed. This is based on one of my favourite Switch games from 2017, I think it came out. This is Celeste. So let's take a look at Celeste on the Game Boy Advance. Wow, so when I saw that Celeste was available for the GBA as a homebrew game, I was expecting it to actually be a port of the Pico 8 game, but I was very pleasantly surprised. This much more closely resembles the modern version of the game, which is just amazing. It features all of the same mechanics, including the dodge, the wall grab, and everything else you've come to expect from the Celeste games. It controls really well. Of course, this is only another proof of concept, so there's only a few levels, but what is here is absolutely amazing, and I wonder if the developer will actually go all the way and recreate the entire game. And as well as this, I was doing a little bit more digging around for Game Boy ROMs, and I did actually find that someone has ported the Pico 8 version of Celeste, which, believe it or not, I actually prefer over the modern version. I know a lot of people don't think that, but I absolutely love the Pico 8 version, and I would love to do a video on the Pico 8 system at some point in the future as well, because it's a really, really interesting bit of kit. Well, bit of virtual kit, but we'll get to that in the future. All I can say for now though is this homebrew game is absolutely stunning. Now, this next one is kind of hard to show using the GameCube, so I've actually got it on the GBA here, and this is really interesting because this is the first Game Boy Advance game that I've ever known they have to hold the system sideways to play. This is a GBA demake of the iPhone classic Flappy Birds, and unfortunately I can't do a comparison with this one, because while I do have Flappy Birds on my iPhone, of course, because it's got taken off the store, you can no longer play it. So I get to relive my frustrations through the GBA. So let's see how this plays. <sighs> yes, it's Flappy Birds. For better or worse, this is actually the most faithful conversion that I've seen on the GBA so far. And apparently this one actually got a physical release when it was first made back in 2014. This GBA port was made by a guy who goes by the name of Jay Van Hutten, and he did an amazing job. Whether you actually like the game or not, there's no denying that this is a really good version of it, and like I said, it's really interesting to actually see a GBA game that you play by holding the system sideways. That's something I never even thought I'd see the system do, so it's really interesting from that point of view. But apart from that, there really isn't much to say. It's literally just Flappy Birds, so I'm sure you know what to expect. A lot of fun, but a lot of frustration too. Now the next game here, and along with Celeste, this is another one of my all-time favourite indie games. I must have finished this game at least three or four times now on different systems over the years. This is Super Meat Boy, and this is another one that's really, really impressive, so let's take a look. So this is Pocket Meat, the pocket version of Super Meat Boy made by Bomber Dev. This is actually a really good version of the classic indie game. I was actually expecting, much like Celeste, for this to be based on the older version of the game. In this case, the Flash game simply called Meat Boy. But actually, this is far closer to the more modern version as well. So once again, I am absolutely blown away by what the developers have been able to do with the GBA. Unfortunately, there's only a few different levels in this demo so far, but it controls really well. And if the developer kept developing this and made more levels, I can definitely see this becoming really popular in the homebrew community. And just for a comparison, here's what the modern version of Super Meat Boy looks like compared to the GBA one. As you can see, it's not actually a million miles away. And of course, don't forget to check the description if you want to try any of these games for yourself, either through an emulator or on the GBA console using an EverDrive like I did. And definitely saving the best till last, this one was actually made by a company, and they were actually looking around to try and find a publisher to get this one officially released, but unfortunately, that never happened, but they did release this playable demo online, and it is absolutely stunning. This, believe it or not, is Resident Evil 2, for the Game Boy Advance. So this is actually a really interesting tech demo made by the Italian game company Raylight Studios using their Blue Roses 3D engine for the Game Boy Advance. And I'm just going to stop talking now so you can hear this. The game actually has a fully voiced intro sequence too. ...that the terrible disaster had been caused by the T-Virus. 
a mutagenic toxin created by the International Enterprise Umbrella Incorporated. So by the time that this developer had built this engine and this demo, Capcom had kind of lost interest in the viability of Game Boy Advance games, so unfortunately their pitch was rejected, but what they actually made is stunning. As you can see, it's really close to looking almost identical to the PS1 game. They managed to get the pre-rendered backgrounds in there, as well as the 3D models for the characters and the enemies. It even includes the same menu system as the PS1 game. In this proof of concept demo, there's only a few small areas to explore, but it is a really interesting look into what could have been. And doing a bit of research on this video, I actually found out that the Blue Roses engine was used to make a lot more demos as well, and they all look really, really impressive. Unfortunately, I don't think any games actually came from it, which is a huge shame because seeing games like this running on the GBA system is super impressive, and I would have loved to play some more 3D games on the system, and I really think this company had a lot going for it, so it's such a shame they never got around to doing much. Unfortunately, none of these other demos seem to have ROMs, so the only one you can actually play using this engine is this Resident Evil 2 demo here, and like I said, if you want to check it out for yourself, I'll put a link in the description to the ROM. So I'm sure you'll agree, they all looked absolutely amazing and the developers that made these are all incredibly, incredibly talented. I will put links in the description so you can go and check out all of the games that I've shown in this episode. I really, really hope you enjoyed it and maybe in the future I will be taking a look at some Game Boy Homebrew games. If you did watch my last video, you'll know that I did say I was going to do a series of videos about my game development journey. Well, I've kind of decided against that because I haven't really got that much interesting to show. So what I'm going to do instead is play some of the more interesting projects that I made on my second channel, which is I'll link down below. That one's called Retro Break Gameplay. So go and check that out. There's a link down below and I will be doing let's plays of a few of the games that I've made over the years. Please consider subscribing if you enjoyed it. Also, please consider checking out my Patreon if you want a behind the scenes look at all of the videos that I've done and all of the ones that are coming up throughout the rest of this year and into next year as well now. So I really hope you enjoyed the episode. That's it for this week and I'll see you all next week for the next one. Goodbye.